Straw bale buildings have been around since about the late 1800s. As soon as John Deere and others invented the baling machine, out on the plains, they were building sod homes. It was easy for them to look at these big bricks and think about like, oh man, that's, that looks bigger and better than stacking sod. One of the key concepts of minimizing carbon footprint is to minimize your concrete use. So the students and I excavated a big two foot wide trench. There's 44 inches of washed stone. And then on top of that, we poured a real minimal beam out of concrete, so it's only eight inches thick. And then there's two rows of block, and then basically just a sill plate that the straw rests on top of, and the straw is just like big building blocks. Okay. We're getting ready to put these box beams on the top, and they'll connect down to these rods that go down into the foundation, and that will compress these walls and make them really firm and stout. The roof won't actually rest on the straw walls. We'll have a post and beam inside and the roof will set on that post and beam. I have a sawmill out at my farm and we were able to salvage quite a few logs off of campus and students actually milled up some cherry and some oak and elm timber that will be used in this project. So some of central campus is represented up here and north campus as well uh, with the, the timber that's gonna be used in this project. So after the walls are compressed, they'll literally take a weed whacker and level out these walls and get them uh, looking nice and straight. And then we'll do three coats of earth and plaster on it. The first one is basically just a mud coat. It's just literally clay, soil, and water. So this has like real long chunks of straw. So we'll have like lots of tensile strength to fill in large gaps. Um, but when we do the final adobe, we want something that's much smoother. So we have a shredder over there to um, take down these long chunks to like itty bitty pieces of like paper shredded. Um, straw that will then mix with clay and sand to make uh, a much finer mix. And then our final coat will be basically the same with a little bit less straw and, a, and some lime putty in it and the, the lime will make it more waterproof. So it should make it more weather durable and also harder to the touch. The students actually were real proactive thinking about a little solar system for this so they wrote a Planet Blue grant and Programming the Environment is supporting that as well. And this will be, to the best of my knowledge, the first official University of Michigan building that's 100% solar powered and 100% off the grid.